Hey, what's up guys? This is James from Beavertail Gamers. Today we're looking at some general strategies I want to talk to you about when playing Duel Monsters. Keep in mind this video is really meant for players who are already familiar enough with a card game, so I don't need to explain mechanics and how cards work and how the game works, etc. Keep in mind, obviously, that when you're playing this game, this is going to be very, very different from the anime. The anime did its own thing. This is the game. If you want to make it far and start getting more wins, then these are some things that you might want to think about. But if this video brings any value, please Make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Let's hop into this. So every time you hop into a match, the first thing you should be thinking about is, okay, how many attacks is it going to take my opponent to get to my life points? And you always want to make sure you have some sort of a backup in order to protect yourself. So look what my opponent does here. He's going to place one card face down and one card in defense mode. So his advantage is I have no idea what these cards are, so they could be anything. So I need to be prepared for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place as many monsters down and or as many cards down just to make sure that I have that backup. So already the card I'm placing is Chocolate Magician Girl. It requires my opponent to have two additional attacks in order to get rid of that monster. But of course, what I'm also doing is I'm going a step further just because I have the option. And one monster I'm bringing out is the Fortune Lady Every. And Fortune Lady Every is a really, really good card because I'm able to constantly bring that monster back from the graveyard in order to have that defense. Also, notice what's going on in this turn. So my opponent is going to play a trap card in order to banish my monster by being able to use the quick play spell Mystic Walk in order to destroy Fortune Lady Every center to the graveyard. This is a really good counter move because Lady Fortune Lady Every has an ability where I can actually summon her back from the graveyard to the field if she's not banished. So these are just some combos that you might want to think about. So already, as you can notice, my opponent has a monster on the field and I have nothing to defend me. I'm not too concerned about this because I have way more life points than my opponent, thanks to my quick play spell. So I do take a little bit of damage, but it's not the worst thing in the world because now I can special summon Fortune Lady Every from my graveyard so that one, I have a powerful monster on the field, two, the ability can activate so I can banish my opponent's monster, but also three, that's why I put my monster in defense mode. I have a defense for my life points. You want to always think about how can you protect your life points at the end of the day. So this is a bit of a risky move that I did because I played Witch of the Black Rose and its ability draws a card and if it's a spell or a trap card, it immediately goes to the graveyard. So it's a bit risky, but it helped because now I have a monster on the field. You notice I went straight away for the attack and that's because I know that the monster isn't going to do anything. My opponent doesn't have a spell or a trap card in the field and they don't have anything in their hand. So it's a very, very safe move to make. Of course, I'm also at risk because my monster is a fairly weak monster. So these are just things you got to be very wary of. So right now, if you look at my current setup, I only have one monster on the field and they're in attack mode, which means if they get destroyed, I also take damage. But not only that, that's my one and only defense between my opponent and my life points. I have nothing else on the field, nothing else in my hand. So it's a little bit of a risque move. So that's just something you gotta be very, very careful of to make sure that you have better defense. Now see, my monster ended up getting destroyed. And so my opponent now has a free attack on my life points. So as you can see, my opponent has two monsters on the field and I have no defense whatsoever. So obviously I'm gonna take a massive amount of damage if it weren't for the fact that I had plus 4,500 HP, then I absolutely would have been defeated a long time ago and I would have lost the duel. But thankfully, because I gained that extra HP, I have a little more wiggle room to make a comeback, which I end up doing. So now I can special summon Fortune Lady Every from the graveyard. So that allows me to banish one of my opponent's monster and I have the most powerful monster on the field currently. And basically at this point, I'm just getting ready to fusion summon my ace monster, which is Quintet Magician. So as you can see, I fusion summon Quintet Magician and its ability automatically destroys every card on my opponent's side of the field. And I basically just win the duel from there. So I already look at my opening hand right now. So I have two things. One, I have, obviously I have a monster that I can place on the field and that's gonna protect my life points. But also number two, if I end up drawing another monster from my deck, then I can use Chocolate Magician Girl's effect to send that monster to the graveyard in order to draw a card. But what that means is my Chocolate Magician Girl essentially has two attacks before it's destroyed. Not only that, but I also have Kite Roy in my hand, which, allows me to block two attacks from my opponent. So overall, I currently have, 
Well, I don't. I didn't draw a monster, but at the moment I have three attacks before my opponent destroys my life points, essentially. So it's important that when you're constructing your deck and you're choosing the right cards to have, that you really keep in mind about what kinds of extra backup do you have in case something goes wrong so that no matter what you draw from your deck, you have some sort of tactic and some sort of combination that will protect you at the end of the day. At this point, you're noticing that I only had one use of Kite Roy and my opponent had two monsters. At this point, it's about choosing what's going to give you the least amount of damage. Regardless, I am going to take some damage on my life points, but I chose to block the Dark Magician's attack because I would have received more damage from that. So it's about choosing the lesser of the two evils. Now, and in the end, I end up did losing this duel. My opponent had way more monsters and I basically had sort of a scuffed setup. So it is what it is. Sometimes you can just get unlucky. So GG. So every time you hop into a duel, the first thing that you want to take note of is what kind of deck is my opponent using? That'll give you a really big idea of how to counter their strategies. So already I know that this player is using Kaiba and they had a skill of ultimate dragon. So I know they're going to use the blue eyes white dragon deck. So already i know the strategies of how to counter that and what exactly their monster effects are going to do so that i can prepare accordingly now at this point you might notice that i'm battling but my opponent has a mon has a card in their magic trap zone at this point i choose to do the attack anyways only because one i already have some extra assurance in my spell and magic zone and number two if i lose lemon magician girl it's not a huge loss because she's a weak monster and by doing so, I discovered that I can inflict damage because that face down card wasn't really going to protect them much, which I was right. Because thankfully it was only a counter trap, which I already had a few of my own counter traps ready to counter that one. All right. So now notice that I have Chocolate Magician Girl and Lemon Magician Girl on the field. So that's two monsters. Chocolate Magician Girl can bring another monster from the graveyard. So now that's three attacks. And I have my enemy controller quick play spell in my matching trap zone. So that means that overall my opponent has to attack me at least four times before they can get to my life points. So this is good. So now I know that I'm relatively safe and that unless they do some super combo, then I'm relatively safe and I can just focus on building up my ace monster, getting that on the field and going on the offense. Already I'm also at a big advantage because I have 3000 life points. My opponent only has 800. So I can start being a little bit more aggressive here. Now, the quick play spell enemy controller is a really, really, really OP card. Cause as you can see, I don't just use it to, for defense purposes, but I can also use it to substitute my monster in order to take control of my mon of my opponent's monsters. Usually most people will, most players will just use this in order to take possession of my opponent's most powerful monsters. But don't be afraid to take control of their other monsters in order to perform a fusion, a synchro, or even an XZ summon. So what you're noticing is I took possession of this person's tuner monster, which I was able to use for a synchro summon. So that's not only going to destroy their card, but also allow me to get a more powerful monster on the field. And once again, I had a counter strategy already for their spell card so i was able to send lady fortune lady every to the graveyard which once again i can bring back next turn and i had a monster on the field in order to attack my opponent but they didn't have any way to defend themselves so it was gg for them so at this point what's really important when you're going into a match as well is you need to think about the long-term strategy not just oh i need to get monsters on the field to defend myself i need to get spell and trap cards in my zones blah 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 but really think about what's the end game for you what's the overall strategy i use a spellcaster deck and my overall goal is i want to fusion summon my ace monster quintet magician because that's usually my best way of winning the game so my deck is specifically constructed around drawing as many cards as i can sending as many of those cards to the graveyard and then eventually banishing the five spellcasters from my field or graveyard needed in order to make that fusion summon so as you notice, every time I place a card, one of its sole purposes is just so I can add more spellcasters to the field or the graveyard so I can make the overall fusion summon. So that's why you notice I'm just continuously drawing cards. I have spell and trap cards specifically to let me draw more cards and just eventually get the enough spellcasters that I need and get the fusion summon cards that I need in order to make the fusion summon. 
So because I already know that my opponent is using the Blue Eyes White Dragon deck, I'm already familiar with what that deck can do, and I know what their next strategy is going to do and how I can counter it. So they're going to bring out Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon, and one of its abilities is it destroys one monster on my side of the field. Now the only downside is that that Blue Eyes White Dragon monster can't attack the turn and activates the effect. So, but this is stuff that I know ahead of time so that I can be better prepared for that. So, for instance, its effect destroys Palladium Oracle Mahat. This allows me to bring Dark Magician from my deck onto the field. So, it just, again, it allows me to continuously be summoning spellcasters in order to further fuel what I need to fusion summon my ace monster. Alright, so my opponent has now summoned Blue Eyes Twin Burst Dragon, which I already know that dragon can attack three times as well as if it attacks a monster and the monster isn't destroyed then that monster gets banished instead so i need to be careful and make sure that when i'm choosing a monster that i'm keeping that effect in mind so i end up bringing out palladium oracle mahad which means that overall my opponent when their attack power is cut in half due to chocolate magician girl they're going to take 1000 points of hp of course palladium oracle mahad is also going to get banished but I do that so that my opponent ends up losing more HP, which is kind of worth it to me at the end of the day. So now Blue Eyes is going to attack Chocolate Magician Girl. They're going to take damage. Chocolate Magician Girl will also get banished. His Blue Eyes Twin Burst Dragon can no longer attack. So now I have an HP advantage. And just so happens that I would manage to draw the spell card Magicalized Fusion. So now I can, sum I can fusion summon my ace monster Quintet Magician and win the match. So overall, I hope these tips help you out. Just keep in mind that with more practice and just keep playing the game, you're gonna get a lot better. You're gonna get a lot more familiar with not only your cards, but with other players' cards so you know how to counter their strategies, how to counter the effects, etc., etc. So again, if this video brought you any help, then please like this video. It means all the more help to us. Please make sure to join our Discord down in the description below. That way you can constantly send questions and and join other like-minded individuals in playing this game and getting better. So with that said, good luck to you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.